this winter has brought it all so far. The driest January and February on record, the snowiest December on record in the Sierra, and the wettest October storm on record. Yeah, it's something climate scientists called weather whiplash, and it's likely to get more extreme in the warmer climate. Meteorologist Darren Peck is here with more. Darren? Well, by breaking as many records this winter as we have so far, on opposite ends of the extreme, so close to one another, it's as if the Bay Area is being given a crash course in what climate scientists are trying to tell us when they say weather whiplash is getting more extreme. February was weird, like record-breaking weird. More near record temperatures in the forecast this weekend. Let's back up a second. We were also breaking records in October and December for the exact opposite reason. We're talking about wind and fog and inches of rain. We've just gotten a crash course in what climate scientists mean by weather whiplash. This year, from late 2021 into the early part of 2022, is a great example of exactly this kind of precipitation whiplash. Dr. Daniel Swain and his colleagues and coined the phrase weather whiplash in a 2018 paper showing how much more extreme the whiplash could become in a warmer climate. Within the winter season, we expect there to be more variability, wild swings between individual wet months and individual dry months during winter, during the water year. Let's look at this year's two extremes. We didn't just break temperature records in mid-February. The dome of high pressure in the atmosphere at that time was also the strongest ever recorded off our coast in mid-February. But perhaps more important, the entire two months of January and February were dominated by a near constant block of high pressure off the coast. This is how you deepen droughts. December, however? So we've got probably close to six, seven, maybe even eight feet of snow out here. And that was totally different. The term weather whiplash has definitely uh, been used uh, adequately to describe what we're seeing up here this year. Andrew Schwartz runs the Central Sierra Snow Lab. Our December was the snowiest December that we'd ever had. We had 214 inches of snow here at the lab. And let's not forget October. It was, after all, just 700% of average rainfall for the month. This turns out to be the strongest atmospheric river in 40 years that occurred in October. It's actually the atmospheric rivers that are gonna bring the biggest impacts from either side of the whiplash. And so what we're really going to have to come to terms with is not a future without water, but a future with water coming at inconvenient times and in inconvenient amounts. Since we've gotten so much better at forecasting atmospheric rivers, we can now be smarter about the way we manage our water. And if you wanted to see an example of how we move forward into a world with increasing weather whiplash, come here to Sonoma County. They used to have to release water from these huge reservoirs, regardless of what the forecast was for flood control priorities. But using highly detailed forecasts of atmospheric rivers, they are now able to hold on to a lot more of this water in a safer way so we can keep it for the dry times. We need to know when those atmospheric rivers are coming in, whether they're gonna land above our reservoir or below. And once we do that, we can replicate the science behind that to other reservoirs across the West. We also still have some say in how extreme the whiplash becomes. Daniel's research assumes carbon emissions stay at their current path. The good news is, uh, hopefully, that we won't actually do that and that real world carbon emissions will come in uh, under the, the levels uh, foreseen in a high warming scenario. That part of the weather whiplash story, that's still to be written. And we actually got a little bit of insight on Monday. You may have heard it was national news. We covered it here. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change released the latest report on where we stand right now in terms of carbon emissions and projected warming. The black line shows you how much temperatures have warmed up to this point. Going back to 1950, we've warmed up about a degree Celsius. Those are our options. We still have a chance to correct this course. The higher we go in terms of warming the atmosphere more, the more extreme the whiplash is going to get. And that's probably the takeaway from this, guys. That's the number one factor that we've got to keep in mind on all of this.
Yeah, interesting stuff. But Darren, hasn't California always been known kind of as a place that has these big swings from year to year, even, yes. even month to month? Yes, California, we're, we're notorious for having wild swings. Compared to the rest of the country, California has always gone through bigger swings from dry years to wet years. It's just a product of kind of where we are in terms of the storm track. But what the climate scientists are telling us is, we're gonna start ramping up those extremes. So how unmanageable do we want those swings to become? That is the question that still remains to be answered in all of this, guys.